with my first pick, I'm going to go with Anthony Edwards. Charles Barkley Pippen trying to get down to that low box. Barkley after he comes around his teammate. A little shot with the elbow. As long as he doesn't embarrass me, that's all right. Shaq played extremely well. I thought he was the MVP. I wanted to go out there. I wanted to guard Mike. I was going to guard 48 minutes if I had to. I'm going to make this a one-on-one -on -one game. He and Michael Jordan have promised us that they will put on the show here today. Hey, Mike, you got to shoot it quick. Go ahead, you already. ready. Can somebody tell me what the record is? 52 is the record. This is the type of things that happen that make people think the NBA script. The NBA All-Star Game has given us some truly iconic moments as it is not often that the world's biggest stars meet on one single stage with the chance to show the world, even when it comes to the best of the best, I stand out. So while the NBA All-Star Game is fun, it has also been proven to be incredibly important. Did you know that the last two NBA All-Star Game MVPs went on to become NBA Finals MVPs? Will we soon see a third? In particular though, the All-Star Game has proven to be especially important for young superstars. Because what if I were to tell you that throughout time, history has shown us that a young star's first All-Star Game performance is actually a solid indicator of what type of playoff performer they will be in the future. As remember, these are the biggest competitors in the world, and so when they match up head-to-head, -head, there is for sure a pride aspect to this game. We saw it during the actual draft. Nobody liked getting drafted at the end. And we just had an incredible amount of first-time All-Stars put their talents on display in Anthony Edwards, Shea Gilgis Alexander, De'Aaron Fox, Jaron Jackson Jr., Tyrese Halliburton, and starter Lowry Markin. We just watched these guys put it all on the line against the best in the world for the first time end. As you are about to see, history has shown us that those that stood out are very likely to stand out in the ultimate way in the future, while those that just fell in this new monumental career moment have a history of continuing to do so. So what's up guys, Mike here, and today I think I found something that is a very very cool. And to show you what I mean, I think anyone has respect for someone who not only can reach a giant stage like an NBA All-Star game at a young age, but also deliver in that very first opportunity. Being able to succeed despite not knowing what you are really in for, that shows a mental toughness, a readiness for the moment. And in a lot of these games, we find young stars who will go on to be great finals winners come through right away. But before we continue, guys, I'm very excited to say that today's video is sponsored by our friends at SeatGeek, the number one rated ticketing app that has more than 70,000 live events on it every single day. Now, of course, I am a giant NBA fan, so I've been attending a lot of St. John's basketball games, and I've been using SeatGeek to get great tickets as we smile through the pain. I also love Theo Vaughn, though, and he is playing in my area, and I use SeatGeek to get 10 out of 10 tickets for that show. And speaking of 10 out of 10, the dot system also makes finding tickets very easy. Red means bad, green means good. I personally use SeatGeek whenever I buy tickets, and with the NBA and NBA, NHL in full swing. You know that SeatGeek is hooking you guys up. With my promo code 2KMike, you are going to get $20 off your first SeatGeek order. The link to go download SeatGeek is in my description right now. And again, guys, that is $20 off your first purchase. $20 off. All you have to do is use my promo code 2KMike. Link is in the description. Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into today's video. While amazingly on the other end, a lot of the guys who end up not having a lot of playoff success or guys who just fall off in general, a lot of those guys had disappointing to horrible games. Remember, the All-Star Game is an honor, but it's also a competition, especially when you are a young player going up against another young player. If you have watched Anthony Edwards play, you know that man is as competitive as they come. He's going to be out there trying to prove that he is the best young player in the world. Back in 1998, in his very first All-Star Game, a young Kobe Bryant would showcase his talents to everyone against none other than Michael Jordan. As Kobe 
Kobe would actually finish with more points in his first All-Star game, 18, than his season average of 15.4. So watching Tyrese Halliburton go out there and surprise everyone with 18 points and three assists. Well, as you are about to see, that has been shown to matter. And on the other side, watching someone like De'Aaron Fox finish with zero points has shown to matter too. Back in his first All-Star game, playing on that same court as a young Kobe, a young Antoine Walker was just not great. He finished with only four points, a prime example of a young star just not rising to the occasion against the game's best. As we all know, Kobe Bryant became Kobe while Antoine Walker is Antoine Walker. And so digging deeper here though, I have taken the liberty of highlighting every single time a first time all-star either had an incredible showing or didn't exactly seem ready between the years 2000 and 2010. A nice large sample size that is also good because this is a list of players with completed or nearly completed careers. So we know what happened to them. And as you can see, going through the years, it very much stands out that the most winning young players on this list are the ones that perform the best. It is right here in our face. I'll say personally, I did not expect the list to look this definitive, but it also stands out that many young stars on this opposite list of players that did not live up to expectations. Well, as we could see among these names, a lot of these guys did end up falling off or they did end up not having playoff success. The 2002 All-Star Game was all about iconic Wizards legend. I'm just kidding, that hurt to say. Michael Jordan to begin. This is gonna be a chronic problem the rest of the year for you. Toro's okay, we will probably want to take a look at uh, some of the theatrics from Michael well, Jordan. Well, he goes by uh, Garnett. But ultimately, Jordan ended up struggling. Jordan ahead of the field. Jordan's hit. Oh, he threw it. Whoa. Oh, goodness gracious sakes alive. However, off the bench, a young Paul Pierce, perhaps inspired by T Max, off the backboard dunk. Played the game of basketball because I love it. And, you know, the MVP stuff, that's for everybody else. What'd you think of that one there, Tracy McGrady? Would more than show that he, Paul Pierce, was ready for this moment. Pierce would finish with 19 points, the third most in this game, and an incredible showing for a first-time All-Star. The West would ultimately take this game, though, and it's very important to note that first-time All-Star Steve Nash and Peja Stojakovic, a future MVP and a future winning player, certainly impressed, and despite the fact that Baron Davis legitimately cooked Kobe Bryant. East Coast for the final shot. All right, Davis spinning his way. Dirk Nowitzki in his first ever All-Star game showcased his confidence and played so well that he forced his coaches to leave him on the court, knocking down several big shots in a West win that showed Dirk's dominance to come. On the flip side, headed into this night, Steve Francis and Jermaine O'Neal both had plenty of hype, but they simply did not perform. By the way, guys, I am on the grind to 2 million subs here, so if you are enjoying this video, it would be awesome if you could subscribe and turn on post notifications. Now back to the video. In this year's game, Anthony Edwards faced the pressure of being LeBron James first pick, but in the few moments he was allowed to touch the ball and showed he was ready for this stage and finished shooting six for eight, I will say the two most impressive standout guys were Tyrese Halliburton and Shea Gilgis Alexander. Halliburton continued to show that he is unaffazed by anything that is thrown at him, playing like a 10-year veteran yet again. While Shea, he had a wild of nine points and seven assists in just 10 minutes played. He also had several times where he could have scored and instead just passed to an open teammate. I think if Shea was actually allowed to go out there and get 30 minutes played, I mean, he would have been on pace to compete for MVP. So overall, if I did have two major takeaways here, it would be one, De'Aaron Fox disappointed with zero points. And two, Shea looked like he was for real. He looked like he was ready to be a real NBA superstar that a team can depend on in the playoffs. We have seen in the playoffs every single season, some guys rise to the occasion when the pressure is like a thick cloud around them when any single mistake could cost your team, city, and fandom everything. We have seen in those moments, some guys rise and some guys completely fall off. When you are feeling that level of mental stress, you need the ultimate level of mental toughness. And again, while the All-Star Game is certainly fun, it is also the ultimate competition, the ultimate challenge for competitors, the ultimate opportunity to prove yourself as a young player. And we saw in 2005, LeBron James certainly faced tons of pressure. He even faced trash talking from Allen Iverson. Oh, 
play these first time was taking all the time. <laughs> so you got to play 40 minutes, 42 minutes. But you get the trophy, so that's cool. He ain't number 16 years old. But despite this, maybe in spite of this, LeBron would put on a show and was close to being named the game's MVP. Also, in just under 24 minutes, Dwayne Wade would put up an electrifying 14 points and very soon after was the finals MVP in a Miami Heat championship. Then we have the other side. Amari Sotomayor and Gilbert Arenas did struggle in this game and both of those careers, for different reasons, did end up coming crashing to a halt. Headed back to this list overall, diving into the 2010 game, I think we have perhaps the best example of what we could be looking at in this year's game. Maybe a changing of the guard. What do we make of Shea? What do we make of Lowry? What do we make of Anthony Edwards? We know there is a ton of hype around them, but at the end of the day, we have seen a lot of young players fall off. We've also seen a lot of young players rise up and do things that we didn't even think were possible. Headed into the 2010 game, there was tons of hype and expectations and also doubts surrounding both Derrick Rose and Kevin Durant. And in that game, we watched Rose and Durant deliver. And very soon after, Rose was the youngest MVP in NBA history and would help the Bulls reach the Eastern Conference Finals, while Kevin Durant would end up winning an MVP himself with the Oklahoma City Thunder, who he helped reach the NBA Finals. Which means at this point, we know the past is there. We know how the young guys performed. So it's time to see, does history repeat itself or not? And so there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video like this. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.